Hey everybody, Dave here and thanks so much for joining me for another one. Today I'm going to be starting a series on how to build your own DIY custom inline spinners. And so I'm going to walk you through the whole process from pouring to assembly. And today it's all about pouring, so stick around. So let me show you some of the things you're going to need in order to pour these lure bodies. Uh, first off, you're going to need the, the lure body mold by Do It. It's a model LB-5-A. Inside the mold is five cavities. It's one thirty-second ounce, sixteenth ounce, eighth ounce, quarter ounce, and three-eighth ounce. So it'll range anywhere from small spinners all the way up to the larger size you'll need for things such as pike and such. Uh, so anyway, I've already gone ahead and I have blackened and cleaned this mold so that the lead releases more easily. And if you want to learn how to do all that along with how hot I run my pot and about the lead and all that, um, check out my other video on DIY blade baits and how you can make those. That will cover all the other stuff you need to know in order to uh, get you up to speed. So, we have the mold. Next thing you're going to need are some of the, the shafts here. These shafts go in the mold and they create the cavity in the lure body to, so that they can slide on your spinner shafts. All right. I've gone ahead and purchased a hundred pack of these and um, the kit, the mold actually comes with five of them already in, in there. But you know what, I like to have extras and because um, they'll get bent and, and whatnot. And so I've gone ahead and purchased 100 packs, like $5. Now, the place I purchase most of my components from, like the shafts, the mold, and other things like that, is uh, a small mom and pop shop. I call them mom and pop shop but because it, it's not real super big box store type things. And that right here is uh, Rock Island Custom Rigs and Jigs. And uh, they have really good prices, great service. And uh, I just like dealing with a smaller guy. So anyway, uh, I'm not affiliated with them and I receive no sponsorship or anything. But I do like doing business with them. And so I just thought I'd throw that out to you to help you as well. So the other thing you're going to need is a pair of needle nose pliers as such. And uh, that's about it. So uh, let's get started. Now the first thing... This lead is up to temperature, so the first thing you're going to need to do is to warm up your mold. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either set it on top of the pot, uh, you know, and let it heat up from the bottom. Or what I, I like to do, and you can do this with this mold. You can't do this with every mold. Um, like, for instance, blade bait molds, you can't do it. The, the lead will run at the bottom. But with this mold, and also like jig head molds, you can preheat them by just pouring lead directly in them. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it about five times, and that'll bring the temperature up to uh, the the mold up to temperature. You really need the mold up to temperature in order to get a good pour and make sure everything fills in all the nooks and crannies. So let's go ahead, and uh, I'm going to start now. I'm just going to when I pour this first first one. I won't do this when I'm pouring them individually, but as I pour them to heat the molds, I like to connect them all. And you'll see what I'm talking about so that I can just take the pliers, pull them out, put it back in the pot to remelt and just keep going. So let's get started doing that. See, I uh, just move, it, move the mold across and fill up everything. And that will solidify very quickly. All right. As you can see, I can open the mold. And that's sort of what they look like inside what the lure bodies look like. And so I'll just take this. And you always want to be careful when you're removing lead so that you don't hit the pot or anything like that. But I just want to pull these out like that. And now I'm going to take them and put them back in the top of the pot and let them remelt. So let's do that a few more times and then we'll get to actually making the lure bodies. Now that the mold is up to temperature, the next thing I'm going to want to do is take my shaft right here and just drop them in the mold. It's so much easier just to close the mold, drop them in from the top, 
then to, to leave the mold open, lay them in, and try and close the mold. So, we just take the mold and close it up, and then right here in these slotted areas is where your wire shafts will go. So all we need to do is take them, and there's a small hole there. We just put it in there, wiggle them in, and let them drop down. They go in pretty easily. You don't. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want these to, uh, to face like that. Um, where they would be in, in the cavity area or the other way going there where any lead that came out would join it. You want to try and keep them in a, in a way so that they're as free as possible to get them back out. So with that done, just make sure they're all facing perpendicular to the mold. Now we can start our pour. Now this time instead of pouring as we were heating all in one, you know, uh, that I could do because I was taking them out. We're going to have the shafts in there, so we're going to have to pour each one individually. I'll show you how that goes. So as you can see, you just pour each one individually. And it looks like that. So now it's a matter of pulling the shafts out, and it's a matter of just gripping them and lifting them out. If you don't put them all the way down in the mold, see sometimes they'll have some lead around them, like that. Um, you can still get them out, you just got to grip them and just lift them and then pull straight up like that, and they'll come right out. Now, once you have all of them out, here's one more that i got to do. One of the things you can do is just leave them sticking up a little bit more um, so you can get a hold of them if the lead does go around them. And once once that's done, it's just a matter of taking them out like this. And they come out pretty easy. As you can see, you can just tap them. And there you go. And that's what they look like poured. Has the sprue on top and it has the lure body. Now I'm going to show you how to separate the sprue from the lure body in the cleanest way. Okay, let me show you how to remove the sprue from these. So what I do is I grab the body itself lengthways with a pair of needle nose pliers. That way as I'm twisting it I don't bend the body. And then I can just twist this right off. And there you go. Pretty easy. Let me do another one. Again, you just grab the body lengthways and then just take the sprue. And there you go. So now that they have the uh, bodies in a nice little container here, all the sprues are broken off. What I want to do is I want to go over these and just make sure they're nice and clean. Like for instance, this one here got a little edge on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file like this and I'm just going to backstroke the file just like this. I want to do this over newspaper so that lead filings go in that and I can throw it in the garbage and make sure you wash your hands afterwards as well. There we go. That's really nice and smooth. Ready to take some paint. Try another one here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See like right here, you can just barely see that. Um, that's a rough edge right there. I can catch it with my finger. So what I want to do is I just want to back drag that. And you can feel that file grabbing. And then eventually it'll just glide right over there. Nice and smooth now. That one looks good. And I just keep doing. I've got quite a few to do. And then we're going to get ready and paint. Hey, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us today. And uh, learn a little bit about pouring your own lure bodies. Hope it was helpful to you. You know, if it was, I'd really encourage you to uh, click the subscribe button and also make sure you hit that notification bell so you'll be up to date on all the videos as soon as they come out. Make sure, too, you stick around for other segments in this series, which is painting and tying on our tails and also assembly. So, until next time, I want you to remember always that God loves you. You know, if 
you, you're not sure where to start a relationship with God or maybe it's something you've been putting off, I'd really encourage you to check out my free book in the description below. It'll walk you through exactly how to do that. It's called Growing Deep, and it's there for you without email to capture or any other thing. And uh, I'd really encourage you to take the time, check it out. It might be just what you're looking for. So until next time, remember, God loves you more than you can know. Thanks for watching, and God bless.